All right, for the topic on trigonometry, you might be wondering, it's a huge topic, what is it that you should cover? Well, here's what you should cover. I've gone through every past exam question, and these are the most commonly occurring topics. That's why these are very important topics. Now, I have a really bad joke for you for trigonometry. Um, can a mathematician get a date? Of course he can't. Okay, that's really bad. <laughs> All right, so if we're going to look at these, um, these questions, uh, this topic, trigonometry, shows up uh, pretty often on paper one and two, but if anything, it's slightly more heavily weighted on paper two. Okay, so just so you know, it shows up more on paper two. However, uh, sine rule, this is uh, what we do in a um, non right angle triangle. This is one of the simpler rules that we learn, and that one's mainly on paper two. It's pretty much only found on paper two. Makes sense because you need a calculator for that one because you need to solve for angles. Uh, cosine rule gets a little bit more complicated, but again, it's what you do for non right angle triangles. Again, paper two. The area of a triangle, that's an interesting one because you're used to doing like half base times height for a right angle. This is what do you do for an area of any type of triangle? They'll show up pretty commonly on both paper one or two. Now, uh, for topic four here, what I've called topic four, radians and the unit circle. This is kind of a, a general skill. This isn't really, um, it isn't really asked as one question itself. This is sort of implied in a lot of other things. But radians, uh, this is understanding that we can go around in a circle, and instead of doing things in degrees, we do things in radians. So this is a whole other way of thinking about mathematics. If we do this one here, this shows up most often on paper one. Now we have something called arc length and sector area. Uh, this is something that, you know, if you're actually looking at a piece of a circle like this right here, uh, and it's in radians, this angle, you might want to know what's this length of this arc, or you might want to know what's the area of that whole thing. And that is a topic that's mostly done in paper two. Now this whole skill about sketching cosine and sine graphs, it's really important to be able to do them by hand, sort of really quickly, there's a sine, and here's a cosine like this. Knowing how to do these and where these go, this is really important. Um, this is kind of a skill that's, that's being used in general. It's not really asked per se. So I'm actually going to say sort of question mark, and I'll explain that in a second. We also have something called special triangles and quadrants. This is a trick that I'm gonna show you in order to help you to do something really important, okay? So they don't really show up exactly on paper one or two. The whole thing that we have to do is this, solving trigonometric equations and solving trigonometric equations part two. What we're doing there is these show up in pretty much uh, paper ones and twos. Remember I said paper two is most heavily weighted, but I can tell you this, if you're going to be asked a question in paper one, these tend to be the ones that are asked these tend to be the most complicated and the most difficult. And that's where these skills come in. So these skills of understanding how to work with radians and the unit circle, those come in to serve, you know, solving for, this is like solving for exact values, something like, you know, cosine of five pi over three, something like this, or solving equations. How do you do this without a calculator? Those are some of the toughest ones. So doing this is really important. Also knowing how to sketch them comes in really handy, as well as special triangles and quadrants. Okay, so this four and six and seven here, those come in to this. That's why I put them there. These are skills we build in order to do these ones, which are really tough. Uh, then we have transformations of sine and cosine, um, and those are found on pretty much, uh, I mean, they're found on paper one and two, but they're, they're found a little bit more on paper two, at least. So this is how we can do this, so just keep in mind, this is really what the most common things are. And what I like about this, we can actually make a prediction then. On a paper one, what's most likely going to show up and in what order? Well, remember I said it's mostly paper two. So if you're going to be asked about trigonometry in paper one, it's usually something that involves radians and finding exact values. In other words, something just like this, this topics eight and nine, like I called them here. These ones right here, those are most likely going to show up. If you get something on paper one, they tend to be the really difficult ones. And this is what you need because they require a lot of different steps and skills. On paper two, you're most likely going to be asked for arc length and sector area, which is awesome. It's usually one of the easiest questions on the exam. But then again, you have cosine and sine rule, which are needed. Those come up pretty often. Transformations show up, as well as, of course, this exact value stuff. I should put that in as well. So we also have exact value. Those show up very often there as well. It's just that these are easier when you get to use a calculator. It's a lot harder when you don't get your calculator. 
let's get started.